You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. Tuesday evening, June 7th. The United States is getting ready for summer as summer weather pours into the desert southwest and into the Texas area. It actually is first starting off in the Texas area. We have record heat, which is expanding to include much of Texas. Temperature hit 114 degrees yesterday in Rio Grande Village, Texas. Phenomenal stuff going on over there. Although it is Rio Grande Village, Texas, temperatures will be approaching 116 degrees in Phoenix, Arizona this upcoming weekend. We have temperatures, record heat. Actually, Yuma, Arizona is so hot that we're not going to see record heat over there, but it's going to be very hot for Yuma, Arizona. All of these places have chances of getting heat advisory stuff. Heat advisory criteria expected over much of Texas. Many places think it's borderline right now, and the National Weather Service for some of these cities is waiting for the higher resolution computer models to come out before they have confidence in heat advisory. It looks like heat advisory criteria is 103 degrees for two consecutive days or 105 degree heat indices for two consecutive days or more. Houston, Texas is getting blasted by heat. Forecasts high is going up into the upper 90s for tomorrow. It's some cloud cover in the morning that might be holding those temperatures back. Uh, Otherwise, temperatures may easily hit the triple digits. Highs from the upper 90s to 104 degrees, depending on the cloud cover. And combine that with the dew points in the upper 60s to mid 70s, that's mid 70s combined with temperatures well into the 90s. We're talking about a certain 105 degree heat index, possibly higher than that. Places on the coast will not even be dropping under 80 degrees for Houston. Overnight lows in the low 80s for coastal cities, pretty much on par with those ocean water temperatures. It is really, really hot weather, which is developing down there. And the question is, what's going to happen with this hot weather? Are we going to have a year like we had back nine years ago in 2013, where the heat just stayed down there? in the desert southwest and stay down there in Texas or is it going to spread north and it seems like the consensus is all of these national weather services everyone forecasting this heat will be expanding into the midwest next week yay yay expanding into the midwest next week High temperatures, again, we're going to see record, close to record heat in the desert southwest. Some cities, the records are just so high that it really is not going to be record heat, such as Yuma, Arizona. Fresno, California, temperatures approaching 100 degrees, actually going into the hundreds as we go into this weekend. This is much different than what happened last year when Dallas, Texas didn't see their first 100 degrees until late July last year. The desert, the, those places down south were dealing with so much flooding that the heat domes actually set themselves up north last year in the upper Midwest. The triple digit heat to start off the summer was taking place in North Dakota. This is even before the Pacific Northwest heat wave developed. And speaking about the Pacific Northwest, it is the opposite from last year. We're getting a winter storm. Storm systems, a weather pattern that resembles winter, continues to move into the Northwest Pacific. This is an atmospheric river headed into the northwest Pacific will be affecting the southwest portions of Canada and the western portions of Washington. An actual atmospheric river with several inches of rain. It's going to help create a difficult situation for heat, which might be good news for many people. Rapid snow melt expected over there. The heat is going to it's going to it's going to come with difficulty. Maybe we'll see it in a couple weeks. Maybe not. But we will be seeing that heat in Texas, the desert southwest, and it will be expanding for next week to include the St. Louis area as temperatures soar 
into, well, uh, the National Weather Service reports the models are saying low to mid-90s. Climatology, you know, for St. Louis, Missouri, when you get a heat wave like this, the Memphis, Tennessee is telling us, their National Weather Service is telling us that the 500 MB pressure chart is going to be taking place in, within this dome of heat at 594 uh, which is a very high, a very amplified high pressure ridge. Sound the numbers sound very similar to what took place in the Pacific Northwest. Very similar to what took place just about a month ago in the Midwest when temperatures went into the 90s. So climatology, I think, supports mid 90s in the St. Louis area. Lambert Field International Airport is usually, as we've mentioned, a little bit warmer. We'll call it for a high of 97 degrees for the middle part of next week in the Lambert Field, St. Louis area. Some areas will be getting dew points a little bit lower than usual because the winds will be more southwest than usual. That's going to increase those temperatures. Dew points likely staying in the 60s for many locations that otherwise would be in the 70s. But the Houston National Weather Service has already informed us that dew points over there from many areas will be going well into the 70s. Upper 60s to mid 70s will be the dew points for that area. You know, you have the St. Louis, you have pockets of dew points in this country well into the 70s, surrounded by dew points in the 60s. The dew points are going to play a major role in trying to figure out, determining what those high temperatures are going to be. Well, either way, it's going to be hot. But the question is, will we see highs in the mid-90s? Now, realize this is a week away right now. We're talking about a week away for the Midwest. One week away. So, you know, it's difficult to put any type of experience extreme forecasts when you're dealing with a week away. So the northern cities forecasts remain more normal in the 80s, South Bend, Indiana, Chicago, Illinois, mid 80s. But you're going to see probably those temperatures are going to go up as we go through the week next week, as this ridge builds right into the middle part of the country. And we're going to see those temperatures really start to heat up in most likelihood going into the low 90s in many locations in the northern areas. Mid 90s for the more typical places that hit the mid 90s, such as St. Louis, with the official recording temperature probably somewhere closer to the upper 90s. The question is, will this ridge then move off to the east coast? That's something we're going to have to wait and see because, you see, the thing is is that we have these tropical storms. One tropical storm that everybody knows about where the wind gusts hit, sustained winds hit 70 miles per hour. That was tropical storm Alex that developed Sunday morning over northeast of the Florida area. Well before the thing became a tropical storm, it was a disorganized remnant, remnants of a hurricane which managed to clobber Florida with 12 inches or more of rain you know the, the florida got hit hard by basically an unorganized remnant system so this is a reminder of what even unorganized systems can do and we've spoken about this in the past that these systems that move over the gulf of mexico they've managed to pull off even the most lousy systems have managed to pull off enormous amounts of rainfall accumulation and that's what happened here it turned out the system did turn out to be a tropical storm that's almost after it really pulled away from the florida area now the deal with these tropical storms is that until you hit mid-july we always are going to have a chance for some type of tropical storm development. What happens in mid-July, first of all, we already have a very low chance of seeing any type of tropical storm develop from off the Africa coast to our area. That's due to the Sahara dust. It's absolutely amazing how this dust blows into the upper atmosphere, producing dryness, and it's just too dry for any type of a tropical storm to develop. But, you know, over here, we're very far away. The Caribbean's very far away. Right now, it's very far away from the Sahara dust. So we can get some type of tropical storm development. And, you know, that's what might happen again, what we got this past week. By mid-July, that Sahara dust takes over even the Caribbean. There's no more, in a normal year, there's going to be no more tropical storm development until mid-August when that Sahara dust kind of goes away. So by mid-July to mid-August, that's when we might see a weather pattern change. 
that's when we might get a more established heat set up for the eastern part of the country, even here in the Midwest. You know, we have this high pressure ridge coming in for next week. The question is, will it stay? Will it not stay? And without being able to forecast tropical storms well, and without knowing exactly where they're going, it's going to be difficult to really put a, uh, to, to have perfect clarity on what's going to be going with, on with these high pressure ridges, how long they're going to last. It's much easier to make a forecast once mid-July comes and we can get those tropical storm that they're able totally out of here. Nothing's ever totally out of here, but get the thing out of here so that it just simplifies the forecast from mid-July to mid-August. But until then, we do have to deal with that very that variable which uh, puts a little bit of a wrench in the long-term forecasts. Lake water temperatures over the Chicago area remain in the 50s. That means temperatures near the lake will drop into the upper 50s, even for daytime highs for days when the wind blows off the lake. So the cold weather potential continues for the Chicago area, but we're getting pretty close to when that lake will be warm enough to finally say goodbye to all of that cold weather. The lake water temperature today, or yesterday at, <clears throat> excuse me, yesterday at the shore was 54 degrees. The crib water temperature, 55 degrees. The uh, wave heights for tomorrow expected to be one to two feet. Today was two to three feet. Sunset today, 8.23 p.m. Sunrise today, 5.15 a.m., probably about the same for tomorrow. Uh, we're dealing next week again. We're dealing with a high pressure ridge that will be building heat across this country. Already by Tuesday, temperatures look to be about 18 degrees above normal here in Chicago, 14 degrees above normal in the St. Louis area. And for much of the rest of the Midwest, from Iowa southward, Missouri and Arkansas, all of Missouri and Arkansas, 14 degrees above normal. And when you head into, uh, well, actually, most of these places, 10 degrees above normal and then you head down deep into the south you get six degrees above normal into louisiana and then two degrees above normal when you get really to the gulf coast itself the below normal temperatures are generally found over montana and close by regions for beginning of next week including wyoming and idaho places like that it's really this high pressure ridge that's going to be pushing this jet stream creating a bulge in the jet stream moving up north that's responsible for bringing all of this heat in to our area for next week again this is a week away until then here in the country we have to deal with several severe potential severe weather potentials in fact in the st louis area three three of them over the next 24 hours is a possibility uh, number one this afternoon, number two later tonight, number three tomorrow. All of these could produce damaging wind gusts. You know, when you're speaking, the planes, the planes, we have, they're just sitting, you know, there's something called the ring of fire. So we have that hot air down south. So right around this hot air is continuous thunderstorm development with severe weather potential for areas, especially in the plains. For today into tonight, we have the low pressure system up in the Great Lakes with the cold front going out to the plains. And again, the plains has the severe weather risk, but the rain, perhaps thunderstorms, perhaps some severe weather heads out to the northeast. Generally just rain as the front heads off to the northeast and pretty much clears the northeast by tomorrow. Uh, we're going to see... That warm-up does not take place in the Northeast for the weekend yet. The high pressure, the high pressure system is centered over Virginia by Monday. The back flow is over the Missouri, Illinois area, and the warm front pushes through on Monday through much of the Midwest. But what else do we say here? The record high for today here in the Chicago area was 100 degrees set back in 1933. The record low is 44 degrees set back in 1913. Normal high for today, 78. Normal low, 58. 
coldest temperature yesterday in the U.S. 28 degrees at Fort Rock, Oregon. High temperature again was 114 degrees at Rio Grande Village, Texas. The next several days, temperatures are going to surpass 120 degrees in Death Valley, California. Rio Grande Village gets close to that, but they don't usually get that hot. So I think Death Valley is going to take over. Rio Grande Village has been the hottest temperature in the U.S. for the past few days. But Death Valley probably will be taking over. Uh, as we mentioned, even Phoenix, Arizona will be getting to 116 by the weekend. And Death Valley tends to be about 10 degrees warmer than Phoenix. Although this is so extreme, probably make it 7 or 8 degrees warmer. It's still quite hot when you have temperatures in the low to mid 120s. When you go elsewhere across the world, we have... I, it's hard to believe what is being said, but there was a hailstorm in Germany, somewhere in Germany, with a few feet of ice while temperatures were in the 70s. Now, if that was a mistake, if there was a misprint, I believe it. I believe there was a misprint, but I could believe it. But uh, the pictures do show a few feet of ice, a complete scene out of winter with actual... Uh, snow, you know, snow plows and stuff like that, plowing away the ice. It's really unbelievable. Tennis ball size hail, soft ball size hail fell across the Germany area. This was a thunderstorm complex that developed in France. We also have had a volcano that erupted in the Philippines. More research is needed to be done on that in regards to the strength to see if it's going to be affecting our weather this summer, if it will perhaps be bringing cooler weather than normal uh, this summer. But nobody has mentioned that yet. So uh, we could probably assume for now that that's not going to be happening. And I think that probably does not cover all of it, but uh, it covers a lot. And if there's anything more that needs to be said, we, that's really important. We could always make another podcast to cover that. So the good news for those that love summer is that for the Midwest, we have heat and humidity building in again, likely for next week. For those that don't like summer, we do not have heat and humidity building in for this week. And the East Coast looks like it will have an extended spell of beautiful weather, especially for this weekend. I wish everybody a wonderful evening. Thank you for listening. Have a great night.